हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ मिस्टर अन्वेश वेमुला असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी आई विल टीच यू अबाउट फाज असे फाज असे इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज एन्यूमरेशन ऑफ वायरसेस सो वेन यू से ए फाज ए फाज इज ए वायरस पार्टिकल that kills host cells after infection that's why it is called as phage and the second one is when you say virus virus will not destroy the host cells so here when you study this phage assay we need to know the life cycle of a virus how it proceeds its life cycle using a host cell so each and every virus is said to be specific for its host here we will take the example of we will take the example of uh, t4 phage it requires a specific host called as e coli so when you say life cycle of t4 phage it requires host cell in the form of e coli so this e coli has chromosome along with its plasmids so the first stage of life cycle is said to be adsorption or attachment so virus particle will start attaching to its surfaces by using its tail fibers so here specific receptors present on the bacterial cell surfaces will help in this adsorption or attachment process once it has been attached they will proceed for the second step which is called as penetration so in this penetration step you will find that ho dna of the virus particle will enter the cytoplasm of the host cell this virus particle without genetic material it is called as ghost once it has been completed its second step which is penetration the cell or the virus particle will start taking over the host cell machinery the step is called as taking over host cell machinery here in this case uh, the cell will undergo the virus dna will undergo translation then it will undergo replication what are all the desired products are needed for to carry out its replication are synthesized by using host cell machinery by translating its own dna once it has been completed the virus particle after its synthesis of nucleic acids within the cell it will start going for the next step which is called as assembly which is also called as phage assembly so in this phage assembly step the structural genes which are present or in the form of late mrna has been encoded so here you can find various structures that are synthesized within the host cell one is called as head part the second one is sheath part the third one is called as tail part base base plate has been also synthesized and you can find a concatenator of dna molecule now these concatenators are completely packaged within the head part and the dna has been cut and approximately 172 kilo base pairs of dna will be packaged into the viral head once it has been packaged then phage assembly takes place where the dna once it has filled up then it will start assembling its uh, sheath part followed by base plate and followed by its tail fibers now after the completion of phage assembly then it will enter into the final step which is called as a state called as release for this release a virus particle will encode two different enzymes through its late mrna one is called as endolysin and the second one it is called as holin these two enzymes are essential to break 
plasma membrane as well as the cell wall of the bacterial host cell now once it has broken down these two parts then virus particles pool of virus particles will be released into the environment now this is called as burst size so approximately 400 new phage particles will be synthesized through the infection of one virus particle once it has been completed its life cycle then it will start attacking the next host cells this way the life cycle of t4 phage takes place coming to the practical part what you require is you require first requirement is e coli cells which are grown for two hours so these cultures are said to be required because we require the physiological and biologically active cells to carry out this infection process second one we require phage lysate phage lysate the other name is said to be viral suspension you can say viral suspension you require sterile nutrient agar plates so this sterile nutrient agar plates is said to be the basal media to carry out the growth of E. coli cells after that you require a soft agar which is sterile soft agar medium which contains 1% of agar in it the fifth requirement is sterile saline then you require sterile test tubes as well as you require sterile suspension tubes to carry out this experiment so firstly you will proceed the first step in this is you will proceed you will take uh, all the test tubes you will label them as one two three four five then you have phage lysate you have to add 0.5 ml of phage lysate to the first test tube and you will add 4.5 ml of saline to this and this will become a 10 raise to minus 1 dilution then you will transfer 0.5 ml mix this then you will transfer 0.5 ml to the next tube and add 4.5 ml of saline and then it will become 10 raise to minus 2 and serially you have to dilute this phage lysate in such a way that we can lower down the viral load once you have done with this you have to select last three test tubes and you have to take new suspension tubes into this you will add 0.1 ml of the viral dilution sample in all the tubes and already you have prepared or grown E. coli culture for two hours you will add 0.3 ml into all these test tubes so the total volume is said to be 0.4 ml 0.3 ml of phage, uh, this E. coli cells and 0.1 ml of phage lysate once you are done with this process you will incubate these tubes for 10 minutes for a process called as adsorption in this adsorption step the virus particles which are present in the sample will start adhering to the bacterial cell surface once you are done with this adsorption step then you will directly proceed to the next step where you will take the sterile petri dish which contains the sterile basal medium which is in the form of nutrient agar and you already have a suspension of 0.3 ml 0.1 ml of your uh, diluents then you will add soft agar to it which is sterile soft agar mix the contents properly once you have mixed them then you will add onto the surface of this medium which is sterile nutrient agar and you will label this accordingly it might be 10 raised to minus 5 repeat this process for all the three uh, tubes 10 raised to minus 5 then 10 raised to minus 4 and 10 raised to minus 3 once this has been poured then you will go for a next technique called as incubation you will incubate the plates with the respective temperatures at 37 degrees celsius for 24 hours once you are done with this incubation process in the next day you will find on the plate surface on the media surface you can find clear zones 
where the infection has been completed. These clear zones are called as plaques. One plaque is equal to one virus particle, we will assume it. One plaque is equal to one virus. So here the role of soft agar is to prevent infection to new bacterial cells, to prevent infection and in order to provide background contrast is the second primary role of soft agar. So with the help of this soft agar we can visualize the plaques very clearly and if you are supposed to visualize more clearly then you can go for a negative staining technique where you can impart various types of dyes like negrosin so that you can stain the background and you can make these plaques very clear. So by this uh, we can complete this part practically. So after that we will draw a dilution chart where we will explain about uh, the number of tubes taken 10 raised to minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 then you will uh, record your result in the form of plaques per ml uh, that is if you obtain 10 plaques over here per the amount of sample is 0.1 ml then you have to convert these plaques into 1 ml so it will become 100 100 plaques PFU per ml that is plaque form, forming units per ml then you will get the final average in this way we will perform uh, this phage assay or else it is called as enumeration of bacteriophages thank you